All right, I see it's the top of the hour. So welcome everybody to the functional, up, uh, functional group update for GEO. I'm Stan Hu, the interim manager for the group. Um, just a recap, if I can get my slides moving here. Hang on a sec, there we go. Um, this is in a nutshell what GEO is. I'm sure many people have seen this before, but I'm just bringing this again in case we have new people. Um, GEO's responsibility to basically copy all the data that you have from the primary to the secondary. And currently we have a, a setup right now going between uh, Microsoft Azure in Virginia and uh, Google Cloud Platform in, also in Virginia. So this is actively running today. Um, the team, uh, no changes since last time. Um, same group of people, same great uh, group of folks uh, to work on this product here. We have made one change since our last update. Um, before, we had really only one geo maintainer. We, you know, obviously, geo is a subset of EE, so a lot of merge requests were being assigned to other EE maintainers, but GEO does have specific uh, domain knowledge that we need. And we've made Douglas a GEO maintainer. He's done a great job reviewing merge requests. Um, he's been on the project for a long time and knows ins and outs of it. So this will hopefully help um, reduce the amount of um, bottlenecks in the review process. We had a problem in the last review cycle where four merge requests were, were were being reviewed a week before the release and it looked like they were gonna make it and then do the migration and and uh, lack of bandwidth review, we were not able to get a lot of those in. So for hopefully this will help this, but I wanted this is a long overdue. Uh, thanks a lot, Douglas, for all your work. You deserve this. This is um, an honor to be a maintainer. Um, accomplishments for 11, uh, oh, there's a lot of things that we did this, this past month. Um, in the, in, the, in, the, in 10.8, we shipped um, this ability to push to the primary almost transparently. If you're using HTTP, if you push to the secondary, it will redirect you and automatically go to the primary. Now, that didn't work for LFS at the time, and Ash did a lot of investigation into why that wasn't happening. And it turns out it actually was uh, a bug in the Git LFS client. It wasn't able to handle redirects properly. And so, and for this release, we've shipped the changes necessary in GitLab to support just this transparent HTTP push. It's again as a redirect, but this also required a change on the client side, and this client this this change was uh, fixed by uh, Taylor at GitHub uh, in Git LFS 2.42, which was released last month or so. Um, really great work there. We identified the problem, we raised the issue, and he jumped on it right away. So thanks a lot for that. Um, it's going to help our customers a bit too. Um, this, we've been working on verifying that the references in the Git repositories are correct between the primary and secondary for a while. Um, there have been a lot of cases where things got out of sync for some reason. Um, it wasn't on by default previously, now it is. Um, and there was a lot of work done by Douglas's past release to make it production ready, really. Um, just you know, fixing a lot of the SQL queries, fixing a lot of cases where things were out of sync. Um, so you can look at this merge request for all the details there. Um, we've shipped, we've had this feature on for a while, this ability to uh, move large repositories through just really, instead of doing a Git clone, we do it through a sort of a streaming tarball. And we've been using this on GitLab.com to move some of the more problematic repositories on GitLab.com uh, when, when the simple clone just takes too much bandwidth or CPU cycles to, 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 to create. And so we have this ability to snapshot and move this thing over. We, we turn it on by default 11.0. So just, uh, just to be aware, if customers start seeing things that weren't moved before and now able to be uh, cloned, that is likely a reason why. Uh, Tone did a lot of work this past release to make the you know, Git FSCK run properly on the secondaries before it was not. If you turn on this in the, in the repository check feature in, in Geo, it would only happen on the primary and wouldn't actually happen on the secondary. So um, in order to verify objects are actually correct, we have this feature um, on GitLab right now that will look at the primary, but now in 11.0, it also will check the secondaries as well. And, and, and lastly, Mike really spent a long time chasing down some nasty race conditions and other issues with uploads and object storage um, that will go into 11.0, hopefully with this, with this merge request as well. So we've been chasing down a lot of the failures we've been seeing uh, when we're, as we're doing this migration to Google Cloud, and it's been an incredibly helpful test bed to, to work out issues that you wouldn't normally see in a low bandwidth or low traffic site. Um, and, and on top of all this work, uh, we've been helping a lot with these uh, 
Azure to Google migration failover since the last update. I think we've conducted three or four, four actually updates, uh, four failovers. Um, and Brett and Nick have sort of been coordinating that effort. To, um, yeah, we, we find new issues each time we do this migration, but we're getting better at them and they're uh, getting smoother each time. So uh, you're welcome to follow along. The next one rehearsal is tomorrow, I believe. Stalled, where do we need help? Um, well, we're finding a lot of issues with using Postgres as a queue for the secondaries. Um, and so we're talking a lot about how can we improve some of the performance of our queries, um, since some of these things might actually require Postgres 10. It has, Postgres 10 has a lot of new features, including logical replication, including this thing called aggregate pushdowns, which basically allows you to do counts across different databases. And um, we're just looking at ways we can make these things better for people at scale, for databases at scale. Um, we have one nasty issue that we're finding that our, our, our queue, some of the events that we're processing are being skipped due to the way that Postgres behaves with sequences. So we're looking at that. We're probably going to need help from the database team, probably need help from the build team to see if we can ship Postgres 10 in the next quarter or so. Um, we're finding a lot of new bugs. Uh, we're trying to migrate things to object storage. And so, for example, when we migrated attachments to object storage, uh, we found a lot of different bugs uh, relating to you know things that weren't quite working, moving issues, exporting projects. Um, I think Mike found this problem when they have white spaces in the name, file names, things kind of got into a weird state. So I think there might be more things like this out there when we will need help from the development team, other parts of the team to find if there are other issues relating to this because this will help. Um, solve a lot of the, the, the issues we have with migrating uh, attachments to get uh, to Google. Um, this other feature I've talked a lot about in the past is just this uh, this idea of immutable paths in our in our repositories, and uh, we'd like to get this enabled for in production as soon as we can. We've uh, converted all 500 projects on our dev site to do to using this, and I think we've ironed out a lot of issues in the past uh, two months with this. Um, but so I think it's just a matter of getting sign off and okay from everybody that we should turn it on, at least for a limited time on GitLab.com, because I think this will solve a lot of bugs we've, we've been seeing. So what are our plans going forward? Well, um, the first thing that is uh, top of mind here is finish this Google migration. We currently have a date set with July 28th. Now we're going to have a call probably in the next day or two to figure out whether that's going to hold or whether we need to delay that date. But right now, that's sort of what we're shooting for. Um, and the three main things for the next months are just improving the geo performance usability. Um, as I mentioned before, we had transparent push with HTTP. It's again, it's a redirect, so it's not the smoothest thing, but most people are using push over SSH. And Ash has done some great investigation into how that's going to actually happen. It's actually really tricky. We're actually proxying uh, HTTP traffic over SSH, and so there's uh, Ashes has this working uh, this proof of concept that it actually shows this is possible. So this is really really be really cool for people. For example, they don't want to think about which remote they're they're using. They can just do git push. It will go to the right place. Uh, we have a lot of database queries that need to be optimized. As I said before, we're doing a lot of things that touch a lot of rows. So um, again, I mentioned that earlier that Postgres 10 might help here. Um, smarter ways of using um, logical replication might help here and so forth. And the last thing we're working on for this release is exposing more information in the UI. A lot of this information about why the sync failed or what happened to it is available in the API, um, but you can't actually see it in the interface itself. So we're, Kushal and Gabriel are working on this, the screenshot that Hazel created right now, and just making it possible for admins to see what went wrong and click a button if they want to force a resync, for example, and 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 so forth. So they have better kind of visibility into what is happening on their geo instance. So that's really all I had to say. Um, are there any questions? I don't see anything in chat at the moment, but I'll open up to the floor in case there's something else people want to ask about. Hey Stan, this is great, and I, I love all the links to the merge requests in the in the FGU. Just awesome to uh, to be able to to dive into things. Are there any plans to 
I think GitLab Pages is the last thing that is not supported by Geo. Are there any plans for that or is that uh, still unscoped? That's, I mean, it's on the radar. We haven't planned it in the next month or two, but I think uh, it's probably worth visiting. We, there's, there's, you know, Docker registry is another thing that's on, on my mind. But yeah, Pages is definitely something we need to look at. We, we sort of have, uh, haven't put a priority on it because we weren't doing it for the migration, but I agree that it's going to be important with finding that not having Pages is sort of a pain point right now for us. All right. Yeah. And you're totally right. The Docker registry might be, I, I'm almost certain that's more urgent for our customers than uh, pages. Right. The, and, and maybe I should tell why, because uh, now it's a Docker registry. Dimitri is going to add Maven support to it. And one of the main things that uh, things like JFrog Artifactory do is kind of um, spread the files across the world so everyone has quick access. So seems like a, a use case for, for Geo that makes sense. Great. Well, thanks for raising that. Yeah, so I think we'll probably put more emphasis on Docker registry. I mean, we have a story right now if you use use a shared same S3 bucket, then it will at least work for Geo, but that doesn't actually replicate automatically. <gasps> Ah, that makes sense. So it's, kind of, it's it's not a problem at us because it uses object storage. Ah, that's why. And then uh, and then GitLab Pages is it's not that case. Right. Could we use S3 buckets for GitLab Pages, or doesn't that make sense? I think there's been discussion about making that an artifact and object storage, and then downloading the artifact. So I think it makes sense. I think there's an issue open about how we actually use Geo in Pages. So I'll have to link that. Cool, makes sense. Great, well, thanks everybody for your time and I will see you next time.